Welcome to the Continuum Lab. I'm Jeppe and this is Control Freak. I make a new MIDI controller in every video. I make it up as I go along using scraps that I have lying around. And then I jam for a bit and record another voice for the Control Freak theme song, which is what's playing right now. This is the capacitive and touch sensitive MIDI keyboard, which I used to record that little track. This video is about how I made it. The rest of the track is at the end of the video. Let's go. First of all, we need some electronics for this. And of course, I'm going to go with the, the old trusty TNC 3.2. I have this handy breakout board for it here. So then I need um, some kind of support for the keyboard. And uh, I found this box here. I bought a cheap old smartphone about a year ago. And this is the box that it came in. And then that can be like a separator for the electronics, kind of. Whatever. And then put the lid back on it like this and it's a really sturdy box. It's pretty solid so that's what I'm using for support. The TNT 3.2 has 12 capacitive pins so if I go beyond an octave I'll need more than 12. So instead of worrying about that I'm going to um, use a multiplexer. So let's get one of those. I have one here that's uh, previously been used in some other project. We can start putting our components inside here. So this will have to connect to the TNC and then from here I'll connect to uh, a bunch of uh, keys made out of copper tape. Then I need to cover these keys up with a dielectric layer, which uh, I find a very uh, effective one. It's just some polypropylene uh, packing tape. This is just transparent tape like the normal stuff you buy in the, at the store. And then I have some cables. These are also uh, just scrap bits of cable. Okay. Then I have my trusty soldering iron, and uh, I have some solder. This box measures almost exactly uh, 150 millimeters, 15 centimeters. So uh, I want to get uh, 10 white keys on here, and that means that I'm going to have one and a half centimeters per key. I don't really need to sketch that, that's super simple. Uh, just get a one and a half centimeter mark here, and then I'm actually just going to scratch this into here. No fear. Maybe I just got this one wrong here. So there you go. Perfect. Uh, it. Okay, there's ten keys. So we still have six keys left, which is awesome because the six black keys, which puts uh, the total number of keys up to sixteen. That's perfect, that's going to occupy every single pin on the multiplexer, um, so that's cool. Let's do it. Okay, nice. I'm making a complete mess. So black keys go here. I completely lost count. I don't know how many I have. One, two, three. Done. Awesome. Now I'm going to need these. So my idea is to turn this into a monophonic keyboard and then use it to play like some nice bass lines or whatever. Uh, but another thing that I also wanted to do is to respond, respond to pressure with a volume changer. Not pressure, of course. These are capacitive sensors, so they don't measure pressure at all. Am I missing one now? How did that happen? What? Excellent! Let me just clean up a little bit here. Cool! That was awesome. Now I need to uh, make some holes in this box lid. I'm just gonna use like a little pokey thingy here. Cool! Check it out! Let's see. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this multiplexer here. Cool. Let me just think real quick where I want to connect all of these pins. 
Yes, I'm going to uh, go with the four control pins are going to be two, three, four, and five. Pin one is going to be the touch read pin. Um, feet mill headers. Female headers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take six of them. That's going to be the capacitive pin, then a spacer, and then the four control pins. And then I need a separate one with, with two headers on, which can carry uh, ground and voltage. Sweet. Now this uh, large one just plugs in right here, starting on pin 1 and then just running up there. There's an empty header here with 5 volts on it, but who cares. And then I need uh, voltage and ground right up here. Sweet! So there you go, everything is nice and connected, but of course um, I still need to solder the sensors to this side of the multiplexer. So um, that's the whole solder job. So now I just need to figure out how these uh, components here are going to occupy this space inside the box. Cool! Okay, so this is, I guess, the tricky bit. I'm gonna have to separate these out a little bit further uh, to make this work. I should just put a little bit of solder on each of these before putting in the cables. Yeah, so let's just do that. Up. Cool, that is so cool. Okay, the second last step, we're gonna have to just color the black keys black. Nice. Fun step is to uh, put on the dielectric layer. Cool. Oh, there's one thing missing actually, um, and that is somewhere to plug. Oh, <laughs> almost broke it. So what I want to do is run the USB cable out from the side. I'm gonna make a hole to put the micro USB connector through and then I'm just gonna roll it around once or twice in here and then plug it into the TNC. And then to kind of stabilize it in here I'm going to just use some tape because who cares. Cool. That's my keyboard. So need to put some code in it uh, to make it run, and then plug it into a synthesizer and uh, make some noise. It's coding time and coffee time. Except it's not coding time because I already wrote all the code for the keyboard. So uh, I wouldn't want to make you sit through all of that hard brain work. But I am going to show you uh, how it works and um, take you through the uh, three steps that I went through to make it work. So uh, here goes. The first file is uh, this one here. It's a very simple file that simply um, defines the uh, multiplexer and then um, introduces this um, touch read function which reads a capacitive sensor and then in the loop I just read that sensor and then print it to serial. So let's just try and upload that. Let's open the serial monitor. And so you can see we're getting 16 readings here from the 16 different sensors. They appear to all be uh, very close to uh, identical readings. And um, 
all have they all have very similar resolutions and so that's all good and fine so that's it for the first step second step uh, is this file here which introduces a few new things namely um, this one which maps the results uh, of the readings on the sensors from 0 to uh, 127 I also introduce uh, an exponential filter which uh, helps with the stability of the readings so that they're a little uh, less jittery so let's try and upload that excellent let's open the serial monitor again and as you can see each sensor uh, gives a very nice readout between 0 and 127 so the third and final step um, uh, introduces everything having to do with MIDI in the code and so uh, you'll see inside the void loop uh, we have these uh, send nodes on um, and we have some send control change too, that's the volume control and I'm still outputting to serial just so that I can troubleshoot um, but I've also introduced a new term here which is the active sensors which keeps track of the order in which uh, all of the uh, keys are pressed so let's uh, try to upload that Cool, let's open the uh, serial monitor. So uh, as you can see we now have uh, two lines of output and uh, the top line should be the same as before except that now they are correctly mapped so that this chromatic scale here corresponds exactly to the order of the sensors that you can see in the array. The second line of output uh, deals with the order in which uh, the sensors are pressed. So if for example I press C you'll see that we get a uh, number 2 in the uh, in the second line and then I press G and then we get a number 9 displacing the 2 one uh, place to the right. So if we put in more nodes the same thing happens again we get 14 and 9 and 2 have now been moved over. If I remove any of these fingers uh, then they are taken out of the equation and everything is compacted down. Let me remove now number 9 here you can see now it just says 14 and 2. So this works um, with, uh, with any number of sensors up to 16. So uh, that all works perfectly. Let's go make some noise. Uh, I'm going to use one of my synths that I made for the open horn MIDI system. Uh, let's try this one. And uh, then I will want to select monophonic mode. Let's just do it. That works. Uh, cool, so I can already tell there's volume control. Check this out. If I touch very lightly, get the soft sound, but then if I increase the pressure. So, what about uh, combining several sensors? Yeah, that's very nice. So, the uh, monophonic playing mode here is actually something that the uh, the synthesizer does where it simply keeps track of all the notes that I've played. The reason why I incorporated some of that functionality in my code as well is because I want the volume to be read on the active note. And the rest of the notes have uh, no effect on the volume whatsoever. One last thing that I would want to include here would be some portamento. Uh, let me just open the controllers and turn off this threshold value here and then turn the time down a little bit that should be fine close that right up and uh, check this out <laughs> so uh, with that i think uh, i'm ready to uh, record some music Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed The Control Freak, then like this video and subscribe to the Continuum Lab channel where I post content like this every week. While you're there, check out the Open Horn MIDI system, my main project here in the lab. See you next time.